Hey guys, welcome to part two of our Node.js Express Cassandra application video. Um, in this, well, in the last video, we got everything installed. We installed Node, we installed Apache Cassandra, and also uh, we installed Git along with the command line interface. So what I want to do in this video is I want to set up our initial database um, along with the tables. We're actually only going to have one table. But before we do that, I just want to kind of go into what the uh, Cassandra's data structure, because I realize that some of you may not even know what Cassandra is. And it's basically a NoSQL database, um, but it, it, it differs from things like MongoDB or CouchDB. Uh, it's not a document database. It's actually a column family database, um, which uses properties from a key value store as well. So it's kind of unique. Basically, um, it does have tables or columns, you can call them, and um, very similar to a relational database in terms of how it looks, um, but it's actually very different when you look at the back end and what goes on. But basically, we're going to obviously start with a database, all right, and that database needs to have at least one key space, and that's basically equivalent to a schema if you are talking about relational databases. So we're going to name our key space people. All right, and then inside the key space, we're going to have a table or tables, and these are also called columns. Okay, so we are actually only going to have one column or table, and for, for simplicity, I'm going to just call it a table from now on, okay? So we're going to have a subscribers table. And inside the table, we're going to specify the fields that we want. All right. And what, right now, what I want to do is just have a first name, last name, and email. But uh, actually, we need an ID as well. And First name, last name, email will all be text fields. The ID, however, is going to be a uh, UUID field. Okay, so it's going to be a UUID, which is basically a um, it's a long string and it's just a unique um, it's unique identification. It's a unique ID so that we can pull the the correct rows that we want and we're not going to manually type these in we can actually use a generator that will generate these for us all right so let's go ahead and get started we're going to use the cql shell that came with the um with the data stacks package if you don't have this please go back to the first video and just download and install all this software all right so we are now in the cql shell and one keyword that I want to show you is describe. Okay, so you can describe tables, key spaces, um, pretty much any object. And I'm just going to say describe key spaces. Okay, and by default, you'll, you should see these three key spaces we have system, system traces, and then the, the Op Center program, which is the, the GUI, the browser GUI program, also has its own key space. Okay, now what we want to do is create a key space. And like I said, we're going to call this people. Now we also need to specify uh, our replication values because uh, Cassandra is used often for uh, just huge amounts of data, sometimes spanning across multiple data centers. So you, you just need to specify how many nodes you want for replication and you also need to specify the class all right and how we do that is say with replication equals and then in here we need a class and basically there's two classes we can choose from one the one that we're going to use is simple strategy all right and this is used for uh, typically, if you have a single node or you have a, a, a single data center, you would use this. The other one is called network topology strategy, and that's what you would use for um, 
if you're using multiple data centers and you just have a huge amount of data. All right, so that's the class. And then the next thing we need to specify is the replication factor. And that, that basically means how many nodes you want to designate for replication. And I'm just gonna put three, although it really doesn't matter for us. Okay, so uh, let's see what happened here. Unable to find strategy class, what did I do here? Um, hmm. Oh, you know what? This the simple strategy uh, has to ha needs a capital S here. All right, so there we go. So now, if we go back and say uh, describe key spaces, you can now see that we have the people key space. Now, if we want to use it, we need to say use people, and now you can see that this prompt here has changed to people. All right, now CQL is extremely similar to, and in most cases, um, identical to SQL. All right, so you can we can say select all from, and then a table. We can do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a table. And again, just like SQL, we're going to say create table, and I'm going to call this subscribers and we need to specify the fields that we want all right so the first one is going to be an id and it's going to have the uh it's going to be the uuid type all right and then the next one will be let's do email and that'll be text and then we'll do first name which will be text last name also text and we'll just leave it at that. All right, so now um, we need to specify our primary keys. So we're gonna say primary key and ID. Okay, we're gonna put in ID. Now, the way that this works is, is quite different than a relational database. Um, if you want to be able to sort by a certain field or let's say use it in an update or anything like that, um, then it needs to be defined as a primary key so you can have more than one primary key in this case I want I'm gonna use email as well so I'm gonna put that in there okay so we'll run that and now we should have that table we say describe tables Whoop. okay so now you can see we have our subscribers table so let's go ahead and insert some data. So we'll say insert into subscribers, and then we need our fields. So we'll have, uh, let's see, we need ID, and then we'll have email, and then first name, and last name, okay? And then we're gonna say values, so you can see pretty much the same thing as SQL values for the ID. Now this is gonna be a UUID, so it's gonna be this long, ugly looking string of characters. And we don't wanna do this manually. So we, there's a few functions that we can use. Uh, one of them is the now function. So we're gonna say now and then some parentheses. And that's gonna generate a type one UUID for us, all right? Next we have the email, so we're just gonna have to think of an email. We'll just say user1 at gmail.com. And next is the first name, we'll say John. Okay, last name, we'll say Doe. Okay, so that should work. All right, so if we get no errors back, that's usually a good thing. But now we can say select all from subscribers. And there we go. And you can see the ID is, this is a UUID and it was generated by that now function. And then you can see we have our email, first name and last name. All right. Now I wanna go ahead and insert some more um, subscribers here. And I wanna show you how you can do a batch, okay? So we can do more than one query. 
at one time. So we can say begin batch and we don't want a semicolon just click enter because that'll bring us to a new line and we'll say insert into subscribers and we need ID first name last name and then we want our values Okay, values will be um, again we're going to use the now function and then we'll say for email user2 at let's say yahoo.com make sure that you use quotes if you're using strings um, let's see what else do we got first name uh, we'll say Bob and then last name we'll say Johnson Okay, so that's one. Now, without a semicolon, we're going to click enter again, and we can do our next one. So, insert into subscribers. I apologize, I'm not the fastest typer in the world. Uh, let's see, ID, email, first name, last name. And I forgot a quote here. Uh, actually, what am I doing? We don't need quotes here. We need quotes for the values, not these. All right, so we're going to have ID, email, first name, last name. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, values. So for values, we're going to use the now for the ID. We're going to use, let's say, user3 at yahoo.com. We'll say William uh, Smith. All right, and that's good. So without the semicolon, we're going to click enter again. And then what we want to do is apply batch semicolon. All right, so that should, should have ran. So now if we go in and we select all from subscribers. Now we have our three users. All right. Now we can um, we can add a where clause. So let's try to do select. Uh, let's say select first name, last name from subscribers where email is equal to user2 at what do we have yahoo yahoo.com uh, let's see involved data filtering blah 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 okay so what we need to do here is just tack on uh, allow filtering at the end here okay and now it gives us the first name and last name of the person with the email that we chose. Now, one thing that I should mention is that I don't, I believe that if you want to add a where clause, I think that this field has to be a key, a primary key. Um, but I'm not positive, so let me just try something. Um, actually, I think it's only inserts that that's true for, but let's try to, we'll say where first name is equal to Bob okay so no index column present in by columns clause with equal operator all right so basically um, you really have to plan out your database and your schema uh, according to the queries that you want you you're gonna want to run and I think it's a it's kind of a fallback um, for Cassandra because it does add in some extra work and some frustration if you for instance didn't make a field a primary key that you should have um, but it makes up for that in other ways um, extremely scalable uh, really fast can handle huge amounts of data things like that so we have a couple uh, subscribers in our database 
it, our key space has been created. So uh, I think I'm going to stop here because the video is getting kind of long. Um, and in the next video, what we'll do is uh, we'll get Node set up. We'll install uh, Express, which is going to be the the framework that we'll be using. It'll generate all our fi initial files and folders for us. Um, so yeah, we'll be doing that in the next video.